All right, here's a video on how to set up your SSA 1000. So the first thing you want to do is you want to connect the parallel cable there to the serial cable on the back of your computer. And then you also want to plug in the power cord and turn the machine on. And when you turn the machine on, it should then have a display on the front here. Um, Mine says press start to begin the cycle uh, when it first turns on. And I think that's correct. Turn off here and turn it back on to see. Yeah, uh, safety cover not in place, so we've got the lid open. We put the lid back down. This little sensor here needs to be covered with the reflective tape. Start to begin the cycle, uh, which looks good. Uh, we're actually going to run it from the software. So once that's all connected, you can open up the SSA 1000 software, and it should say like this should configure and actually pull up um, when this is connected. If your SSA 1000 is not connected, then it'll say like abort or ignore um, and that's just telling you that you're you're actually not connecting it's not seeing it on the computer side I go up to the top and I can click on new and this is now my uh, window that I can make all of my adjustments to what I want to do uh, when I'm testing some material samples um, I use this interface uh, if I'm testing trusses, I just actually run it without the computer. Uh, you can just hit the start button and not have it connected to a computer and it will give you the maximum load uh, that was on the truss. That's really all we care about uh, when we're testing the truss. Um, so I don't use the computer for that. But I'm actually going to run a tensile sample here for you. Uh, you can set it up. The mode is continuous or increment. So if you have it continuous, it will then uh, continue to apply a force until the item breaks. Uh, if it's incremental mode, you can set the increment, and then you, every time you hit start, it'll then go up you know, 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever you set that increment to be. Uh, I've always run on continuous mode. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure that you're homed, so the SSA is at home. And then we can set up everything before we hit test. So I'll show you what we're going to do to set that up. Um, the first thing is that we want to install this piece right here. So this screws in to the piston that's going to pull down um, on the material. It just has threads inside, and then this piece connects on top of it. And then we're going to be using this cast iron piece right here. Um, and we're going to be also using uh, this piece here. And we'll get a sample out. Now we don't test the samples that came with the machine. Right? We don't use those. Uh, we have our city students make them, or sometimes if we have time, the POE students will make samples. The samples that came with the machine are a two-inch dog bone sample, um, and we insert that into uh, this up here, and then we put the cast iron piece over the top. And then we install the top piece that we screw that on. And a couple of tips. Uh, first thing is, is you want to leave about a 16th inch gap uh, between the top of the cast iron piece and the handle here. Um, you want to make sure that there's a, a gap that pulls out, uh, that the machine pulls out, and then once it starts registering a force, it'll then start registering a displacement. The other thing you want to be careful of is that if you over tighten this, you're going to put um, 
a twisting force on your sample and it's probably going to break uh, when you're actually just twisting this on there. So don't do that. Leave a gap. Now, when we make our own samples, we have three inch samples instead of these two inch samples. And as a result, you have an extra inch of play here at the top that it has to pull out before it actually catches and starts taking a reading. And that takes a long time to test samples. So we've just made a little one inch bushing, uh, just drill the hole out of a piece of aluminum. And that goes actually slips on like a collar onto this piece above um, so that you don't have to wait for it to take an inch out of out of the uh, of the distance there. So that's an option for you. Again, we make our own pieces rather than buying them. I think these are like they're fairly pricey. I think they're around three dollars a piece where we make our own for about a quarter a piece. Uh, maybe less than that. So uh, try to save some money that way. So basically the machine is all set up. This is ready to go. And we just have to close the cover now. And we're going to go over to the interface back here and click on test. Now I'm going to just click on test, but I'm going to show what happens and how the machine runs and what you should be seeing. So I'm going to go back over here in video. So I hit test. You can hear the machine starting to work. You can see the slot coming out of there. And then we should start getting readings on our display. And then we can see that it breaks. And then it stops automatically. It does give us a force and displacement uh, for the maximum there. Or maybe that's not the maximum. Um, I'll have to look at the graph. But then let's go back over to the, the computer software. Um, it asked us to enter a graph title, so this was a brass sample. And then it gives us a graph um, for it. So I can close this, or I want to take this back to home. So you can see the graph here that it, that it presents, and this kind of puts up in real time, so you can see if your machine is working or not. So it's taking it back to the home position, so now it's at home. So I'm going to hit close, and this is the graph that was now produced. And here's what you want to see. You want to make sure that zero, zero is actually a point. Sometimes uh, if you put too much force on it, then it already says that it has a force at zero displacement. That's because you didn't leave enough um, of a gap, an air gap, for it to pull out before um, it started registering a force. Um, but again, there's kind of our characteristic curve for uh, our metals. Uh, we can then uh, find the straight line, figure out where the proportional limit is. Uh, we can calculate the yield point using the offset method. We have the ultimate point, we have the breaking point, and this is just extra garbage information down here that we can actually delete if we're going to pull that information into Excel. Um, but that's what you should get. If you're not getting uh, those things, especially if you're not registering a displacement, um, inside of the machine, I actually had to take mine apart when I first got it. Uh, when it was shipped, there's a rubber band that connects a pulley wheel, or it's a, I guess it's, it's not really a rubber band, but it's a, it's like an O-ring. But it connects a pulley wheel inside of, um, of the box here to the uh, the motor, and that way it knows how far it's pulling downward uh, using kind of that uh, that pulley wheel as an indicator or as a an input. So you might have to take your machine apart. Uh, the guys at SSA 1000 are really great um, to kind of help go through that. I think they sent me a document um, on how to do that, but I basically had to take off uh, one whole side of my machine, I believe and then take off the back plate um, to get to the motor. So it took a little bit of time to do, but um, it wasn't that difficult um, to get into and to to do. I mean, it's probably about an hour, hour and a half job uh, to get it fixed and up and running again, if that's your issue. Hopefully that helps. At this point, um, I save this uh, document or this data to 
a flash drive, so I would just do a save, and then I would pick uh, my flash drive uh, that's in here, and then save it as a, you know, brass sample. And then if it's a student that made theirs, they could save it as their name or whatever, and take that with them. So hopefully that helps. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Like, comment, subscribe.